Al Rolls is the reporter thrown into the secretive world of the 4X supermodel where nothing is as it seems. Beware the techno monk and steer clear of Professor Coe and his two assistants. Give the senior trader a wide berth and don't expect any sense from the risk manager. Good morning, I'm Professor Code and this is the Forex Supermodel for Monday the 9th of the 8th, 2021. Time is just coming up to 0430, half past four in the morning, GMT. Uh, Asian session coming to a close, European session firing up, our lunchtime, North American session. Right, Friday the, the 6th then, uh, the last full trading day, we had a positive unopposed driver in the dollar, so we had no backdoor flows, so this was what, plus one set, seven, eight. Uh, the opposing negative flows were mainly coming out of the euro at minus 11, out the pound at minus 44, and the yen was a negative rock at minus 23, activity plus or minus 178. Over last week, just to remind you for context, we had a negative opposed driver in the euro at minus 211, front and back door flows mainly going into the dollar at plus 191, into the uh, pound at plus 57, and into the uh, out, uh, the yen was sorry, it was a negative rock at minus 37, activity plus or minus 248. So Friday was a bit of a turning point. We had we had this big ramp up in the dollar. Uh, it was the unopposed positive driver. Over the week, though, the euro just about was the uh, was a negative uh, opposed driver at minus two eleven, and the dollar was strong, getting most of it. Now intraday, this is the Asian session to about fifteen minutes ago. Um, we've got a positive opposed uh, driver in the yen at plus forty nine. Uh, front and back door flows mainly coming out the pound at minus thirty one, out the euro at minus twenty six and the uh, dollar was the positive rock at plus eight, activity plus or minus 57. Right, uh, so let's uh, have a look what's gonna knock it about, or has been knocking it about. Right, so uh, Monday then today, we've had China CPI, which came in fairly positive, and China trade balance, which came in rather negative, so a mix there. Um, over the week then, we've really, we've got some, um, we've got uh, uh, China, uh, sorry, um, CPI data, Bit of GDP from uh, GBP and uh, Michigan consumer sentiment. Uh, and today uh, we've got uh, German trade balance as well. So it's a pretty light data week uh, today, uh, this week coming up. Um, so we've got a CPI inflation data, uh, GDP and a bit of consumer sentiment. Right, so let's have a look at the flows uh, before we make some sense of uh, what's going on. And not only that, we can have a look at the asset classes as well. Um, there was a big, uh, big thump down in uh, in gold uh, earlier on, uh, which we'll have a little talk about in a minute. But anyway, so let's have a look. So the uh, the euro then uh, is strong, except against the dollar, the yen, and the Swiss, which is stronger. Uh, the yen is strong, except against the uh, New Zealand dollar. The pound is uh, weak, except against the CAD. The Swiss is weak, except against the dollar, the pound, and the CAD. The CAD is weak across the board. The AUD is strong, uh, except against the yen and the NZD. The NZD is strong across the board and the dollar is weak except against uh, the CAD, the Euro and the Pound. Right, so what have we got then? We've got, we've got CAD weakness across the board and we've got New Zealand strength across the board. So uh, superficially you might think this is a little bit uh, risk off, but then you've got all this um, uh, divergent uh, flows really. You've got, you've got strength in the yen uh, and the Swiss, which is normally risk off, uh, can be. <coughs> the dollar's uh, uh, basically um, uh, weak, except against the CAD, the euro and the pound. Uh, so we've got a mixed picture, which we'll talk about in a minute. So let's just look at the asset classes, and then we'll draw some conclusions. Um, 
about where we think the market is going today. So let's have a look. So uh, US dollar index. Right, well the US dollar index has, has got this sort of, uh, it had the break, it came back, it's now just sub the highs. Uh, gold, as we said, um, gold had this big thump down, it was sort of a, uh, a spike down there. And it's now operating um, at uh, 0.3 from the floor, so it's it's 30% above the model floor. Oil. Uh, where are we? Oil had this this sort of look about it. It's 0.33 uh, from the floor. So uh, similar, uh, about a third off the floor. Uh, and then we, if we look at Wall Street, uh, you've got this sort of treble top sort of arrangement and it's come off, it's just slightly uh, off, off the highs. The S&P, uh, Basically, you've got this break, and it, it's, it's just slightly off the highs. And the tech, similar, uh, just slightly off the highs. So, so uh, equities are, are pretty, still pretty pumped up. US 10-year, this is the price of the bond. Uh, you've got this big pump up in price, yields coming off. Uh, it went slightly higher, broke, and now it's come back uh, in price. It's 0.37. From the high, so so the price has come back down. Yields are strengthening in the U.S. at the moment, um, and the bond, which is the uh, European equivalent, um, basically had that big break up in price. Yields very soft, and now it's come back. It's 0.20 from the high. It's 20% off the high. So uh, the price has come back 20%. Yields have come up uh, in Europe as well. Uh, right, so copper. Remember, copper was very choppy for a long while. It had that big break. Uh, it then came back, and it's now 0.33 uh, from the floor. So uh, it's it's about a third again from the from the floor from the model floor. U.S. steel, um, uh, basically had that peak. It came right down. It's it's 0.4. From the high, so it's about 40% from the high. So US steel has, has actually uh, improved a little bit, but it's still still relatively soft, just above half marks. Right, so let's uh, get rid of this and just make uh, try and make some sense of what's going on. We've got these. Uh, we've had this sort of like volatility spike in gold. Uh, somebody was ditching uh, in the uh, early in the Asian session when liquidity is pretty thin. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, people, why do people ditch gold? Uh, they think the dollar might be going up. Uh, they, they, they're distressed in, in terms of their positioning, etc. So it's, uh, it's not always clear cut. Uh, right, so let's have a look at the majors. Uh, the dollar, the euro, the yen, and the pound. If you start with the yen, well, equities, equities are, are pretty much up there. Uh, just just sub the highs, um, and the yen transmission. Normally, if you get if you get a strong uh, uh, equity market, you get a relatively soft uh, you get a soft yen. Um, so potentially we're we're looking at uh, a negative yen at the moment. And if you look at the uh, uh, where is it the the weekly flows last week, the yen the yen is the uh, negative rock, uh, and it's it's actually um, the positive driver in the Asian session. But that may well just be a temporary thing. Uh, so if you're looking at that, uh, that's where we are. Now the Euro, uh, you've got uh, the Bund. The Bund yields have actually come up for the first time for a while. So uh, the yields are starting to come up. Um, uh, and if you look at the dollar, the dollar, um, is from Friday starting to um, starting to uh, strengthen up, and also the dollar index has got uh, more elbow room to go up to its previous highs. So we suggest that the dollar is going to be strong, carrying on. Um, uh, the if you look at the uh, 
the actual flows in the Asian session. You've got you've got yen strength at the moment, but the likelihood is that, is that this will be uh, temporary. So um, you've got you've got uh, uh, funds flowing into the dollar, uh, coming out the yen, uh, and so that uh, that's relatively uh, balanced. Uh, and then you've got the pound and the euro. The, the euro is likely to be neutral to positive, and the pound. The pound is likely to be soft, we believe. Uh, so you've got negative. So, so just to tidy this up, uh, euro, yen, pound. So you've got you've got a plus on the pound, a uh, dollar, um, uh, neutral uh, to plus on the euro, uh, negative on the yen, and negative uh, on the on the pound. Uh, so, so that's where we are. And if you look at the uh, commodity currencies, um, you'll be able to see that we've got at the moment we've got uh, strength in the New Zealand dollar, we've got uh, weakness in the CAD, uh, and the AUD is strong as well. So, so it's likely you're going to see equities are going to carry on, uh, carry on steaming. And don't forget, we've got a light data week, so uh, watch out for that. <clears throat> so really, this is the basic scenario uh, going forward, we believe. So obviously, it will be dependent on how things pan out, but uh, that, that's our sort of uh, uh, start for 10 for the week, if you like. So uh, hope that was useful. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow for the daily briefing.